So today's video lecture is going to talk about Mrs. Dalloway, um, which is the longest text by far uh, that we're reading for week 6A reading list on World War I and its aftermath. Um, this is also a novel that is, this is the aftermath part of the World War I and its aftermath. So all of the poems that we've read have been from World War I poets writing during the war. Um, Virginia Woolf writes Mrs. Dalloway after the war, and uh, she's reflecting or looking at a society uh, in the 1920s that's really shaped in the post-war period. Um, and we can see this especially with uh, this sort of s pervasive sense of trauma throughout the, the novel, um, and especially in the character of Septimus Smith. Um, so, to start out with a little bit about Virginia Woolf, uh, Woolf was one of the most important modernists. She is one of the people who helped sort of create and bring to, to prominence what we call stream of consciousness writing, which is uh, sort of grounded in, in psychoanalysis, grounded in Freudian uh, psychology, and these sort of notions about the unconscious mind and, and dream visions and things like this. And stream of consciousness essentially is about trying to put on paper the way that the human mind works. So it involves random connections, it evol involves um, memory connections where you move. Like at the, at the very beginning of Mrs. Dalloway, um, we move from uh, her thinking about her, the fact that she needs to buy flowers to her childhood home in the English countryside where, where flowers were abundant. So we have these connections uh, where different ideas, specific ideas, lead to different ideas that may not sort of immediately connect with, with the situation that one is in. Um, questions, divergences, tangents, and things like this are all, are all mirrored in stream of consciousness writing um, and Virginia Woolf is one of the best at this. Um, she, along with James Joyce in his novels like Ulysses and Finnegan's Wake, which are way more complicated and way more difficult and inaccessible than Virginia Woolf, um, these two are the, are, are the artists who really bring stream of consciousness to a major public, uh, a major reading public. Um, but Mrs. Dalloway is about dealing with the trauma of World War I. And so, again, a lot of this is grounded in sort of Freudian psychoanalysis because during the war, um, there's a widespread experience of what they called shell shock, um, which we would now call PTSD. And so, but what Wolf does here in this novel that's so interesting is she extends that traumatic experience, which we've seen also in some of the World War I poetry, she extends that to the home front. So that Clarissa Dalloway is in the same kind of space of uncertainty, the same kind of space of suffering and trauma that characters like Septimus Smith are, uh, people who have been actually in combat. Um, So we've got these sort of parallel currents of psychological uncertainty, of sort of compromised, um, compromised ways of looking at the world, compromised ideologies. And again, a lot of this goes back to the modernist crisis, this fundamental modernist crisis where the pillars of civilization and the things that were supposed to uh, keep people civilized, the things that were supposed to sort of help, uh, help maintain European culture, help maintain certainty and things like this. These things have all been eroded by World War I, and so that's the trauma for Clarissa Dalloway. I mean, she spends an entire day sort of preparing for this party 
but she's struggling with this almost existential crisis where she's not sure ultimately why the party matters. She's not sure what the point of doing it is in this in this sort of post World War One world. We have similar questions cropping up for Septimus Smith, who is uh, a shell shocked veteran who I mean, he, he suffers throughout the book from hallucinations, paranoia, delusions, and we get this very uncaring or unhelpful sort of medical community who more or less dismisses his concerns. And so part of this is, part of this connects with Wolf's critique of the medical community because she herself suffered from long bouts of depression. Um, we think now she probably had bipolar disorder uh, and she attempted to kill herself several times before finally succeeding in 1941. Um, and so Wolf had, Wolf had a lot of psychological issues and so she would be in a very sort of good first-hand position to be critical of uh, the English medical establishment and the way that it attempted to deal with people with psychological problems or psychological disorders. Uh, and so ultimately when Septimus Smith kills himself at the end of the novel, this is in a way Wolf's sort of wish fulfillment moment, um, but it's also I mean, in a in a non-realist novel or a non-naturalist novel, because it's stream of consciousness, this is a, a sort of realistic critique of um, the insufficient healthcare conditions of uh, post-war Britain for veterans who were coming back and who were shell shocked. Um, Oh, the, uh, the other thing that I wanted to say about, about shell shock and sort of Freudian psychoanalysis in this, uh, so, Fro I mean, Freud really started uh, studying, again, the conditions we would now know, know as PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome or post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, shortly after World War I because people were coming back and it was the first time we'd seen sort of widespread psychological trauma uh, in soldiers. There had been individual cases of it, but it had never been... There had never been psychological trauma on the scale that there was after World War I. And so Freud and other psychoanal psychoanalysts started studying this phenomenon. And the reason that Virginia Woolf would have been so familiar with this was because uh, she was a member of the Bloomsbury Group, a founding member of the Bloomsbury Group, um, which was a key sort of group of modernist artists in London, um, visual artists, writers, um, economists, art critics, social critics, things like this. Um, and one of the members of this group was James Strachey, who's produced the standard edition of Freud's works in English. So Wolf would have been uh, Wolf would have been quite familiar with the ideas of Freud uh, because ideas like dream analysis, the unconscious, uh, shell shock, uh, the pleasure principle, things like this these were these were circulating in Wolf's uh, in Wolf's immediate intellectual circle. So I mean. Th Mrs. Dalloway is very much a novel that explores these psychological conflicts and she does so from a position that's informed by psychoanalysis but she also does so from a position that reflects her own experience of post-war Britain. Um, so her own experience as a person struggling with depression or bipolar disorder, her own experience as someone who was on the home front in World War I, her own experience as a modernist artist struggling with the sort of crisis of um, crisis of meaning, um, and her own experience um, knowing and dealing with 
veterans who had come back from World War I traumatized by the experience. So we've got a lot of stuff going on here in, in Wolf's novel. It's an extremely complex novel, but it's one, I, for my money, it's, it's one of the best, probably, I would actually say it's the best modernist novel. Um, the competitors, again, would probably be Ulysses by James Joyce, but Mrs. Dalloway is much more accessible and much more understandable than than Joyce, so even though he may be sort of technically more savvy, perhaps, I, I think Wolf is the best modernist novelist.